Hey everyone, I got quite a few things I'm going to cover today. So the first thing is we're going to go through some of the solar generation since this has been a very good day for solar so far. I got some video of some baby rabbits that are we were able to kind of take account of. They're probably a little less than a week old. Their eyes aren't even open yet. I'm going to talk about some green beans canning. And uh, I got a watermelon patch. That thing has grown like crazy. And I got three or four watermelons now that are over the size of cantaloupes. I was just shocked when I went out the other day. It's just amazing how you go from, you know, one week to the next. And then we're going to give an update on the battery backup system that I've got down there and the process I'm going through for charging. So let's start with the uh, my solar. This is a uh, TED detective system that I've installed in my panel so that it's got uh, current sensors and I can tell how much I'm generating and this is a generation view right now. So I'm generating 7.730 kilowatts and it gives me some historical views and everything which are kind of cool so when I go to graphing all right, so here's a view for July for almost the last week. And uh, when I first opened it up, it was still stuck on May the last time I looked at it. So that's how long ago I looked at this. But you can see this is actually a really good day of generation back here on, uh, looks like the 25th. And uh, yesterday we had some clouds that rolled in in the afternoon. And you can see we uh, kind of fell off on our generation, but this is actually looking really good. But I like the uh, tool, what it gives, because uh, I can sit here and look at like my net generation real time. So right now I've got, uh, I'm actually selling back uh, 5.66. And I've got the dryer going, so the heating elements just kicked on. And so now I'm breaking even. And it also could be the AC kicked on, a couple different things. But uh, this gives a lot of different views. So if I click on this, this gives uh, uh, month history, day history, in fact, this shows uh, back, you know, in 2018 what I was generating. So I actually did better this year for generation than I did in June last year. And some of it I had some shading, so I had gotten rid of some trees and it ended up uh, helping a lot. So that, that cleared that up. So I think this is a, this is a really good capability. Um, anybody that has solar should look at this. One more thing that you can do is there's this TED command. All right, what this does is it gives me the uh, kilowatt net and kilowatt generated. And from that, I actually take and I put all this information in a spreadsheet from the day that I uh, uh, installed my system and then the other thing is I have an analysis that I performed using a PV Watts online tool that would give me a prediction of uh, how many kilowatt hours per day I should be average generating. And then it would give me uh, kilowatt hours per month and uh, you know the solar radiation for each one of the months and that kind of thing. So what I do is I, I put this together in, in a spreadsheet and then I come down and I have a summarize table and I look at it the performance and what I can see is uh, we were actually doing um, really well when I first installed my system and then all of a sudden we went into uh, September through December and I had dropped off significantly and it was just because our weather was so poor here we had uh, you know fog and rain and just clouds in general and we just had just very poor generation and then january came along and it was all clear of course that's the coldest month of the year here in uh, georgia and so you know maybe we just didn't have cloud cover because it was so dang cold and then february we dropped off again and then all of a sudden uh, we've been fine march april may um, and then all of a sudden I noticed in June I'm down 12% again. I need to change that back to black. There we go. And we'll have to wait to see what July is. I still got three days left of data I have to enter. We may come out okay, but I know we got rain coming in later this week, so it may not, we may not make it. Right now we're down 10% short three days, so we'll see how that works out. But this uh, chart here gives an overall view. So this is the generation versus the prediction. And so you can see, you know, 
for several months here we were above the prediction and then all of a sudden we fell below the prediction significantly and then this is that January period where we hit the prediction but then we fell down again in February and then we've been even with the prediction here uh, very close for March April May and then all of a sudden June I was below again so this gives the day-to-day -day view and you can see this white space this shows you when we had significant periods of time where there was clouds or fog or just rain days on end and uh, you can see in this period of time this is where it fell way off of the uh, prediction and here's the uh, June period that again it was like a whole week where we lost production and so therefore we uh, we didn't meet the goal for the month so I think this is kind of interesting when you keep track of your solar and uh, just uh, don't I guess at this point I'm gonna I still need to show you my overall cost-benefit analysis so we could see if uh, we actually I mean based on the data it looked like I was gonna have a good business case for payback within like eight years but based on the real-world performance and the weather driven uh, performance uh, I'm not sure we're gonna get that payback in that time period all right let's go to the next thing all right we got another batch of babies that are only a few days old we just thought we'd do a count here so Actually, there are seven in here. Seven babies. Look how jumpy they are. They make little cute noises. Let's see if we can listen. They don't like the bright light. They want to get back in their own little nesting box here. One of them's a little runt. All right, that's the babies. Like to check them after they're about a week old, and that's close. They're doing very good. Okay, so I finished uh, snapping and stringing my uh, green beans, and it turns out uh, that was quite a bit. I got eight quarts, and I know there's more out there I got to pick, so I'm going to get this one started because. Uh, um, this takes about an hour to go through the pressure canning process. So the first thing I did was uh, put them in the jars and they're, I leave about an inch from the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take boiling hot water and pour it over the top of the green beans. And also there was one full teaspoon of salt that I put per each green bean can jar, I guess in this case. They call them canning, but they're jars. Anyways, uh, since I got four more jars left, I'm going to go see how many more green beans I got. I don't think I have that many right now, so I may end up cutting up some okra and filling up some jars with that. Just to go ahead and get it done. But my canner over here holds seven quarts at a time. So that means I got to do two runs anyways. So I might as well do seven and that'll leave five for the next run. And here's my pot of boiling water. Nothing fancy here, folks. Just water. Now, some people actually use filtered water and everything. I found it really doesn't make a difference. Oh, by the way, when you use your salt, make sure you use pickling and canning salt or canning and pickling salt because otherwise the salt that you use at home will make the water cloudy and not as appetizing looking. So this keeps it clear. I don't remember what they've got in the other stuff, but it uh, clouds up the water. I think there's like anti-caking stuff and whatever. But uh, anyways, that's another little... Uh, um, trick of the trade when you're doing this stuff one of the things I notice is when I first uh, fill these things up I'll fill it up right to below where the threads are on the jar and then I will sit there and use my little plastic uh, I don't know what you call this thing but this is basically used to get rid of any air bubbles and you'll notice that the water level will drop down a little bit and uh, I didn't fill up my pan with enough water so I got one here that needs a lot more anyways so anyways, what I do is I go ahead and throw some more water in and get it uh, up to boiling. And then I'll top it off one more time and uh, before I start the canning process. But it's really actually very simple. And uh, I do use my pressure canner at uh, like 10 PSI for 25 minutes or something because I'm at a thousand feet above sea level. So you have to extend the time a little bit. But uh, anyways... 
it works great. Uh, each one of these quart size jars is uh, equivalent to two of the cans that you get in the store. And we usually use at least two cans each time anyway, so this ends up being a perfect helping. All right, so that's uh, that's really all there is for this. I think the okra is uh, almost exactly the same process, so I don't need, necessarily need to show you. It's just uh, you got to cut them up. And um, I usually kind of scrub the okra depending on which okra you get because the okra may have these... Uh, it's almost like spines on the outside of them. Uh, the ones that I grew this year are a little more waxier. They didn't have the spines. So I may not have to, but I'm just going to kind of check them out real good before I just cut them up and throw them in there. You don't want something that will irritate your throat. I wanted to show you this one pepper plant that I've got that's kind of like taking over my pepper garden. I have no idea what this thing is. i got to go try to find the uh, label down there. But holy mackerel, this thing is growing like crazy. <laughs> This thing's now six feet tall, but it's got these little, little peppers, and they uh, turn red. Okay, I did a little research, and these are Tabasco peppers, so it's a fantastic pepper plant. I can't believe how big it gets. But this is my second batch of tomatoes that I had to start because I ended up with this horrible, horrible... Uh, wilt or fungus i don't know what it was but i i wanted to show you my cucumbers same problem just uh everything turning to yellow so i've been treating the crap out of it hoping that i can get this thing recovered but uh i noticed the new shoots are looking pretty good i also had a terrible caterpillar infestation and uh you know again i'm trying to just do organic i found an organic spray that covers three different things and so i'm trying my uh, green beans have been just attacked over and over again by uh first it was like these japanese beetles and i was able to get that under control but then i ended up with the same worm so i treated that too but i don't have the same fungus problem just a little bit of fungus but not bad i gave everything a good watering there's a whole bunch of green beans i, I gotta pick again this thing has been the most prolific thing i've ever seen in my life i may not do the bush beans next year i just may do the uh these are pole beans. They call them string beans too. But boy, oh boy, oh boy, let me tell you something. That puts out some green beans. I canned eight quarts the other day of green beans. And they were mainly from this plant. Or this set of plants. I forget how many I planted in here. There might have been six or eight plants total. This thing's fantastic. Man, I see them all the way down there. I gave everything a good water yesterday. And so they just uh, really take these little stringy things and within a day those things will be full up complete thick like these I need to get a basket because I already filled up my pocket with uh, peppers I got my pockets aren't big enough for the amount of peppers I was picking off so let me go get something and I can get get all these picked off so I just went out and uh, picked some more green beans and uh, found all kinds of jalapenos and some more of those little red peppers these things are kind of interesting. I don't know what these things are, but man, they are, they seem to be doing really well. And then uh, bell peppers galore. I think I'm going to do some stuffed bell peppers for dinner tonight. I got some chickens that I uh, pulled out of the freezer, and we're going to cook those up. And I think we'll do some stuffed uh, bell and jalapeno peppers. Those are fantastic. Simple recipe, so maybe I'll show you how I do that, but uh, super simple recipe. And uh, I got to go pick my bush beans and everything too, because I know I got more of those. And uh, and that's the final result uh, yesterday of my canning. So I got to get them downstairs. But uh, you know, we're just doing a little bit at a time every day. I noticed I still got some on the table. I got to take downstairs. But this is this is really uh, quite a production line. Oh, I know what this is. This is pickles that I did a week ago. And uh, we even got some cucumbers. Even though I've got a little bit of an infestation, I'm still getting quite a few cucumbers. So um, i got to keep that going. All right. We're getting there a little bit at a time every day. I don't know, between doing the YouTube stuff and uh, doing all the research for the silver and gold stuff and then canning and getting gardens prepped, I'm a busy boy. 
I also wanted to show you I got two of my racks uh, full now and that third one is probably about half so I've got to get splitting and get that one ready but I'd say each of these 12 footers that holds a couple cords of wood and this is about one and a half cord in the middle so that's uh, two four like five and a half cord just right there in these racks that makes it nice right next to the house so we haven't had any rain in about a week I think and uh, I'd kind of forgotten about this side of the yard I just watered my front garden and this is all sweet potatoes right here I watered my front garden um, yesterday and my wife says hey what about the side and I go oh man good idea so I came over here to turn the pump on and everything and uh, we were looking it's like holy crap we got this uh, watermelon patch has just grown like crazy I gotta be careful on these stairs these are really steep but can you see that right there I'm in the Sun so it's hard for me to see here there's one there and there's a watermelon I walked right by didn't see it I got to get some pieces of wood and get them up on the off the ground there's one right there now that I gave it a good dousing and water it ought to do very well so let me get up on here so you can see that watermelon's uh, bigger than a cantaloupe right now and everywhere I look there's little watermelons and there's flowers everywhere even right here by my uh, propane tank so I got to get in here and do a little weeding because uh, I just can't get over this thing I forget how many watermelon plants I put in maybe four and I think I got a couple cantaloupe plants too but uh, yeah this is uh, this is really looking nice so it was a couple days of a couple I don't know four or five hours of road utilling to do this hill and I keep going down here because I'm gonna do my potatoes back here too I've decided this will be the excellent place I gotta figure out how long it's gonna be before these watermelon are done because I really wanted to use this part for my potatoes I'm not doing very good planning of course I didn't understand how big this stuff was gonna get great use of uh, a hill a little bit of a pain working on the hill but it's still fantastic you get that top view down okay I'm on the second set of batteries uh, for my big battery pack and I just wanted to show you this set is in the uh, second to the last well, actually it's in the last stage right now this is uh, it's at full charge and it's just completing the last little bit which is 24 hours and I wanted to show you what happens so I got my multimeter right here, and uh, here's the two that I just completed. Sorry, i got to try to get my... Here's the two I just completed, so let's look at what the voltage is. So 1311, 1310, so those came out perfect. Down here were the ones that I topped off. They were sitting at about 12.5. Uh, and you see I got it at 13.02 I just ran them for like 12 hours or something 13 even 12.94 13.04 so what I hope is when I'm done I'll have all these up to you know like 13.10 or something and maybe they really won't be so that's the first one I did 1311 now let me show you what it is in this final stage so I'm just these are the two that are under charge right now so you can see it's 13.48 and 13.46 so that's the final charge level that it's got going right now and we're just gonna do each one of these it takes about 24 hours to run through um, two batteries at a time so after 10 days I should have these uh, all fully stabilized and then we'll see I'll go ahead and mark on the batteries and see what I've got but uh, so far I'm pretty happy that uh, these seem to be very good charge and uh, they're not uh, I guess I should say the battery capacity hasn't been used up that much if at all 
kind of amazed when these were built in uh, 2013. The AGM batteries actually have a, uh, a higher battery voltage than your standard batteries. So we'll just see. I'll go through all of them. And, you know, if I, like I said, if I get any that are significantly different, I'm going to try to match those together. So if they're a little weaker, I'll put them together in one string and I'll, I'll keep the stronger ones together. So, so far, so good. We're almost done with uh, day two of charging. So a little bit later today, I should come down and this, this will be done and I'll move it down to the next row and work those in. One thing after another around here. I forgot, I, while I'm down here, we need to kind of check in on the potatoes to see how the chitting process is going. Are we growing any eyes on here yet? And It almost looks like that one might be doing something, but uh, it's a little early. It takes about a little bit over a week. There might be a couple going on here. We'll see what happens. And then, uh, once I start seeing some activity on these, that'll motivate me to get out there and get the... Uh, the potato beds ready because I got a lot of potatoes here to plant this will be a lot so I should I bet you I'll get a couple hundred pounds of potatoes believe it or not out of uh, this is probably maybe five pounds of potatoes I'll get 300 pounds we'll see that's my hope of course I don't know what I'll do with that many we don't eat that many potatoes but uh, I'm just trying things and this is left over from my potatoes that I did not uh, eat yet and I just thought uh, I want to try to get a second uh, harvest this year